All right, so this one is going to be all about something called Merkle trees. You might have heard of a Merkle root before. This is all to do with Merkle trees, so here we go. A Merkle tree is a data structure which looks something like a binary tree. It is used as a way to construct the transactions within a block such that we can use encryption to hash them together and keep them all secure. If one of them gets altered, then the whole structure gets spoiled, and the resulting hash at the end, which is called the Merkle root, will be completely different, and then we can see easily that something was maliciously altered. Think of a Merkle tree more like an upside down binary tree where the top nodes get hashed with an encryption algorithm. In this case, it's SHA-256 again. The result of the hashing, um, if you will, will give us something for the next layer of the tree. Then we hash that again for the next layer until we only have one hash left and that's the Merkle root. It's pretty much the result. The top left point in this Merkle tree is a special transaction. It's called the Coinbase transaction. The coin-based transaction is quite a simple concept, really. It's just a transaction which is inside the block that is purely there for the mining reward. Because mining blocks takes computational work, we need to reward the miner for doing that work. So the transaction which takes care of that is called the coin-based transaction. This transaction doesn't come from anyone. It's just kind of conjured out of thin air as a reward to the miner. So it isn't actually a transaction that has been transacted between two people. It's in there as a reward for mining the block. So the first transaction in the Merkle tree is always the Coinbase transaction. So the idea of someone's balance in Bitcoin doesn't really apply. The software doesn't look at your wallet and say, hey, you have 60 Bitcoins, so I'm going to just remember that in a little part of my software that you have 60 Bitcoins. No, it's, it's a little bit more elaborate than that. Instead of a balance, the Bitcoin software looks at something called inputs and outputs. You can think of inputs and outputs as like the flow of currency in Bitcoin, where the software calculates your balance. It just looks at all the inputs and outputs and figures out how much of the outputs you're allowed to spend, rather than saying, hey, you have 47 Bitcoin, you spent three Bitcoin yesterday, so now you have 44 Bitcoin. Inputs within a block are allowed to spend any outputs that also appear in the block, but of course the spend has to be valid. And remember that the protocol for arranging the Merkle tree is part of the consensus rules. So that means that everyone has to be doing it the same way or the Bitcoin network will reject the transmission. For this to work, the transaction IDs which correspond to an output have to be in the data structure before their input that uses them so that software doesn't get confused and the books stay balanced, so to speak. So it makes sense for the Coinbase transaction to be placed first in the tree because it doesn't even have the same kind of input known as the parent input as the other transactions. Its input is called a generation transaction because it's generated from mining the block. So let's say that the block only has the Coinbase transaction and no other transactions within the block. The only instance I can think of this really happening is with the Genesis block, which is the first block in the blockchain. Or if no one is transacting on the network, which isn't really likely to happen anytime soon on the Bitcoin network, but hey, in some altcoin situations, it might. So in that situation, no further hashing happens and the Coinbase transaction essentially becomes the Merkle root. This is because if there's only one transaction in the Merkle tree, it's not really a tree at all. There's just one transaction, so there's no need to rehash it. There are no other transactions to secure. So let's say there's only one transaction apart from the Coinbase transaction. When this happens, they're concatenated. So in other words, they're stuck together. The Coinbase transaction is always first, remember. And then it is hashed twice with SHA-256. So let's say that the block has three or more transactions. Then we're going to start forming a Merkle tree that actually looks like a tree. The rows in the tree, which are the result of the first top layer being hashed, is called an intermediate row. To hash the row, the transactions are paired up. Remember, the Coinbase transaction is always the first. The pairs are concatenated, and then the raw bytes of that are SHA-256'd twice. The resulting hashes are the next row in the tree. So you might have seen a problem here, and that is if the number of transactions is odd, not even. There's going to be one left out for hashing. But the Bitcoin developers thought of a clever idea to overcome this, which is basically taking the odd transaction which is left over and hashing it with a copy of itself. So every transaction gets a friend to hash with, even if it's just a copy of itself. So this process happens again and again until there's only one resulting hash left, and that is the Merkle root. So it says here that the transaction IDs and the intermediate hashes are always in something called internal byte order. Internal byte order is the way that the hashes are displayed as strings. It's the form that is used in serialized blocks and transactions. Think of it as reading from left to right. So this has been a little bit on Merkle trees. There's going to be another video on Merkle trees in the future when we dive further into the nuts and bolts of the protocols that Bitcoin uses for its blockchain. 
But until then, thank you for watching, and make sure you like this video to encourage me to do more, and leave all of your questions, no matter how stupid or complicated, in the comments, and I will make sure I answer as many as I can. Also, subscribe if you want to see more of these videos, and I will teach you everything you need to know about Bitcoin and altcoin developing.